Hello everyone, this is the historiographer. Today, we will be continuing the life and times of Muhammad ibn Abi Amr, otherwise known as Al-Manzur, one of the most famous rulers of Al-Andalus, where his rise to becoming the de facto ruler of Al-Andalus and his foundation of a state within a state will be explored. The death of the Umayyad Caliph al-Hakam II in 976 AD initiated a power vacuum in Al-Andalus, where the successor to the throne would be the son of al-Hakam II, the young 11-year-old child Hisham. With Hisham being too young to rule, the power vacuum would be filled by a formidable yet uneasy triumvirate. This triumvirate consisted of three men, Al-Manzur, who by now controlled important positions within the state and was backed by both his loyal North African troops as well as the cunning Queen Mother Subh, the highly influential Chamberlain Al Mushafi, who controlled the administration of the state, and the powerful old General Ghalib ibn Abdul Rahman. Tensions would soon flare between Ibn Abi Amr and the Chamberlain Al Mushafi, however, as in 976 AD, Al Mushafi failed to properly defend against the Christian incursion, which nearly reached Qurtula, where, contrary to both Al Manzur and the General Ghalib, Al Mushafi favored diplomacy. The Chamberlain's failure allowed Ibn Abi Amr, who was backed by Subh and the General Ghalib, to assume control of the troops. Indeed, Al Mansur would go on several campaigns against the Christian kingdoms to the north in the following year earning him a huge deal of prestige and popularity within the Andalusians as well as securing his political power. Al-Manzur, hoping to secure his position with the influential General Ghalib before committing against Al-Mushafi, married the general's daughter when he returned to Qurtuba in 978 AD. Finally, Ibn Abi Amr and Ghalib would strip Al-Mushafi of his title as Chamberlain and imprison him, where both leaders would now be responsible for governing the state. Hoping to further gain power, Al-Manzur started the construction of a completely new city in 979 at the outskirts of Qurtuba called Al-Zahira, where he would move the young caliph and his mother there. Dissatisfied with the unrelenting power grab of Al-Manzur, the general Ghalib would betray him in late 980 when both were returning from a raid against the northern Iberian kingdoms. However, Ghalib was defeated by Al-Manzur and his Cordoban and Berber troops and Ghalib would soon join forces with the northern Christian kingdoms of Castile and Pamplona. On the 10th of July 981, the Battle of Torre Vicente would occur between Al-Manzur and Ghalib and his Christian allies. Despite having the upper hand in the first moments of the battle, the 80-year-old General Ghalib would die in battle after being decisively defeated by Al-Manzur. Victory in this battle finally made Ibn Abi Amr the sole chamberlain and the de facto ruler of Al-Andalus. Indeed, this battle would earn him the title Al-Mansur, or the Victorious, hence giving him more control over the young caliph. Join us next time as we explore how the role of Al-Manzur, thanks to his cunning, army reforms, and various military campaigns, would represent the strongest period of the Andalusian state.